sort of what that looks like three dimensionally. So if you have a wire, and let's say end view, you are looking at the current coming towards you. In that case, well, the magnetic field in the space around that, what does that look like? So we gave the view for a, gave the direction of the magnetic field for a side view, right? So I want you to think, you know, imagine it three dimensionally and imagine what that would look like when if you are looking at the you know, point of the wire, the wire coming towards you straight. And we do those two combined through a perspective view. That's a, sort of a, a faithful three dimension or you know, two dimensional rendering of the three dimensional thing. So uh, this will probably take a minute or two. And when you are done, I want you to give it a try for a circular loop. Like what the direction of magnetic field would look like. So um, let me try to motion it in three dimensions. So um, this is what the magnetic field should look like. If this is the wire, then the magnetic field should look like it's going around. That's uh, what you see here. So magnetic field, it's coming out of the board here. No, sorry, into the board here, coming out of the board here. And when you connect that direction, it would uh, complete a circle. Yeah. So. Yeah, so if the, that's the sense of intuition you have, great. Um, so, you know, illustrating it uh, with a picture, it would look like, um, so the end view would look like you have uh, some um, look coming out of the board. So you do have something that looks like this. And um, when you have a current that's a, uh, um, you know, current that's at this point in space. Looking at Biot-Savart's law, um, if I simply drew a single circle, would that be accurate picture? As in, there's a magnetic field here and no magnetic field farther away? No, right? There's a magnetic field essentially all, at all space near this current. The, once you have, it's like the same thing with electric charge. Once you have something that's generating the field in space, the sort of the its entire vicinity is filled with a field. So if I were to draw the magnetic field lines uh, following rules that were similar to the electric field lines, it would look something like this. Um, well, I'm not quite spacing it right, but if I'm spacing it out correctly, then it would look like it gets spaced out farther and farther as you go. So let me <laughs> just throw, yeah. So where it's denser, it represents the uh, fact that your magnetic field is stronger because of smaller r here. Yeah? But you know, if you draw a, sing a single circle, that's fine. Um, in terms of indicating the direction, that's how it goes. And um, so in the perspective view here, it would look something like this. Circle that's uh, going around like this. So you expect to have the same magnetic field all throughout, the, along the length of the wire. Um, this is probably a good point for me to introduce uh, uh, one of the shortcut right-hand rules that I mentioned was coming up. So for you to figure out this um, direction, you had to, um, you know, do this cross product, right? You have to figure out, okay, DL is coming out of the board. Um, so, you know, look at this point, then this is my R hat. So DL cross R hat, it's pointed downward. And you had to try, uh, try that out for a few different points before you could figure out, oh, it's going in a circle, right? What I can tell you now is that there's a shortcut that you can use to figure out if you have a current flowing in one direction, then now you have some intuitive feel that the magnetic field is going in a circle around it. And there's a shortcut right-hand rule that'll tell you that sense in which it's going around. So this is, so um, as I said last time, this is why I prefer the whole hand version because it morphs naturally into this. So I use my right hand for the same reason as we talked about last time. So the way I orient my right hand is I orient it so that my thumb points in the direction of the current. So I orient it that, this way. So my thumb points in the direction of the current. Then the way my finger curls around is the direction that magnetic field curls around. 
So here, my thumb points out of the board. So my fingers curl around in the counterclockwise direction, and that's the direction of magnetic field. Yeah. So it's a shortcut rule. It's a, you know, um, and it's consistent with the basic rule that we reviewed last time. It it sometimes makes it easier to quickly figure out the direction of magnetic field. Okay, so uh, how many people are done with this, the circular loop already? Some people are. Let me give you a minute or so. So actually, this shortcut rule that we just covered will help you do this more quickly if uh, you're just finishing up. Yeah. So uh, let me use the shortcut rule. So we using the shortcut rule, this is what I can do. Um, I guess it's easier to do it in the end view. So I say, all right, on this end, the current is coming out of the board. So the magnetic field due to that current that's coming out of the board sort of loops around like this. So let me just draw a small circle here for now. And here, current is going into the board. So the magnetic field due to that loops around like this. Let me draw a small circle here for now. So the reason I'm drawing a small circle is um, I want to look at only parts of space that's mostly affected by this segment of wire where I can kind of ignore the other thing. And um, if I do the same thing here, then it'll look like uh, coming out of the board. <laughs> so, you know, small circles like this, small circles like this. And, you know, if you imagine doing it for the rest of this uh, loop, then small circles like this. Do you uh, notice anything common with all these small circles? of a uh, magnetic field. I'm not really coming. So from inside, so you know, um, imagine my, I'm looking at the current on the back side of the loop. So current is co going from right to left. So the magnetic field outside of the loop points downward. Magnetic field inside of the loop points upward. In fact, is that the description I can use for every one of these loops? Magnetic field. Outside points downward, magnetic field inside points upward. Yes? yes? So if you extend this picture, this is what it looks like. So here magnetic field is pointing up. Here it's still pointing up, still pointing up because they are all adding together in this region. There's nothing that's trying to make the magnetic field go downward. Out here, um, we'll do that later. Um, so this current loop, we are going to use this example again later in the class. It's, uh, um, it's actually a model of a uh, very basic magnetic object you have already seen, actually. But we'll talk about that more later. Um, but I want to use this to introduce uh, the second shortcut rule that's uh, sometimes useful. Because, you know, what, remember what I said about current? Um, that's the whole reason we had to have this. There's no such thing as a point current. Whenever you have current, it's going to be going over some space. So this actually illustrates the two most common ways you can have current, uh, current where you look at um, some localized part of it. This is where you imagine it's an infinitely long straight wire, and you just look at a part of it. Um, so there, you know, the wire doesn't begin or end because it's infinitely long. Um, here, this is the other way where you have formed it into a loop. So here, wire doesn't begin or end anywhere because it's a loop. So. Um, So, um, so that, that's where the, the shortcut, rule, um, shortcut rules, uh, they, they apply to one of, the, one, one of the two geometries. The first one applied to the straight geometry, so the right hand, thumb towards the current, magnetic field curves around. Here, what I'm hoping you're beginning to notice is that when you have a current that's going in a circle, then the magnetic field that's a result of the current that's going in a circle actually is kind of straight in one direction in a particular region. So this is the second shortcut right hand rule. Once again, taking your right hand, this time what's curling is the current. So you orient your hand in such a way that your four fingers curl in the direction of the current. Then your thumb 
points in the direction of the magnetic field inside that loop of current. So here, you know, um, so the way it goes, so it goes into the board, so it has to curl this way, and the thumb points up, and that is the direction of the magnetic field. So once again, it's a sh uh, question? It's just for a loop, though, that second right-hand rule? Yeah, so it's a shortcut rule for a loop of current. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so the thing about this, both of two shortcut rules is that they are based on the very basic fundamental rule that we reviewed last time. So it's a shortcut. If it makes sense to you, it helps you, great, use it. It'll shorten your problem solving time. But um, if it confuses you for some reason, then uh, you can always rely on the ba very basic rule that we have covered from the beginning. Yeah. So it's for this um, presence of these two shortcut rules that I use the whole hand version. Because you know, if you are used to using three finger version, then this doesn't change into the shortcut rules. So it's like, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so th these are the directions of um, magnetic field. And um, it, it's a sort of, um, compared to the direction of electric field, this is not as intuitive. Like if you had to guess it, <laughs> um, you wouldn't have guessed this absent some experimental evidence. And that's uh, what I was saying, that when people discovered the effect of um, effect of current carrying wires on compasses that it took them a while to figure out the, the fundamental law for that interaction. So um, yeah. So oh, so this is actually demonstrating that if you have a loop of current, then the magnetic field inside points uh, sort of in a uh, sort of one particular direction. So oh, let's see if we follow the shortcut rule. I don't remember. Okay. So. If I make the current to go clockwise, so according to the shortcut rule I'm giving you, magnetic field should point into the board. Well, let's see if that's the case. Um, let me. All right, where is that also? North, the blue end is the North Pole. So North Pole is pointing in the direction of the field. That's what you would expect, right? If you are thinking of it like uh, electric charges in electric field, the field pushes the, um, the positive charge or north pole um, in the direction of the field. So um, that's what you see almost everywhere inside. Now, once you go outside, then it begins to curl around the way you see it drawn there. Right? It doesn't curl around as well, but outside it begins to curl around. <laughs> So, but, so the shortcut rule applies for inside within the loop. Um, and if I change the direction of the field, then it points the other way as you would have expected. This time, the current curls in the uh, counterclockwise direction, so the field is pointing towards you guys. All right, um, yeah, so once again, this is very unintuitive. So um, it's good that a lot of smart people figured it out, figured this out for us in the 19th century so that we don't have to. Um, that's sort of one of the reasons you should be reading the textbook. <laughs>